in the interest of time, I think we can kick off. Still, colleagues are able to, to join us well. So once again, good morning, afternoon, evening, and very warm welcome to our webinar, Engage Successfully in Online Learning. I am Daniel Noit from the Capacity Development Team of UN Volunteers, where we take care of the personal and professional development of all UN Volunteers. And I will be your co-host today. It's a pleasure to see so many of you joining us as we explore the opportunities and the strategies for successful online learning. Before we continue, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. We encourage you to actively participate throughout. Uh, you can use the chat box and also the reaction functions to express your thoughts during the sessions. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box and we will address those during our dedicated Q&A session at the end. Accessibility is also a key priority for us and we are committed to making this webinar as inclusive as possible. To support this, we have enabled closed captioning on Zoom and you can activate the closed captions by clicking on the small CC button at the bottom of your Zoom uh, window. Before I introduce uh, the colleagues and uh, the agenda for today, I would like to take a moment to highlight the, really the longstanding partnership between UN Volunteers and the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. For many, many years, our organizations have collaborated closely to empower volunteers around the world with the skills and so the knowledge they need to make a meaningful impact. And this partnership has been quite instrumental in providing those high quality training programs, fostering a culture of continuous learning and also ensuring that volunteers serving in different UN entities are well equipped to tackle the challenges they face throughout their missions. And now, as you may see uh, on the screen, and we have uh, two fantastic panel members with us today, so it's your lucky day. I would say two great partners and friends from UNITAR. I would like to invite first um, Alexandra to introduce herself and then Cynthia. So Alex, the floor is yours to say hi to the audience. Thank you, Daniel. Hope that everyone can hear me well and uh, just to echo your words in terms of our the joy of working together in this partnership. Uh, it's indeed a long-standing commitment, hopefully to on our side to be able to serve you better also um, from the training side within your uh, UNV uh, missions. My name is Alexandra. As uh, Daniel just mentioned, I'm a program co programs coordinator at the online learning and education unit, uh, part of the peace, uh, the division for peace at UNITAR. Um, so again, my work uh, relates a lot and um, delves into online learning. Um, some of my some of my tasks also include uh, program coordination of academic partnerships, and I support my. Uh, colleagues with EON V2, and I'm super delighted to be involved in this webinar and to share a bit uh, more about what can be the benefits, but also focus a bit on um, on some of the challenges we might have. We'll do some polling to just be able to carry on this conversation. And, um, and again, to, to give you an overview um, alongside my colleagues of what we have to offer and how we can support you. So it's a huge pleasure to be here. As Danielle mentioned, uh, the globe is represented and what a great way to to, to start our week um, being Tuesday today. So really happy and I hope you have a great time today. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Alexander, for the great overview. And uh, I invite now Cynthia to introduce herself. Thank you, Daniel. My name is Cynthia Alkhouri, and I am the LMS coordinator and the instructional designer at the Online and Learning Education Division for Peace at UNITAR. And I will be giving you a brief overview on how to access the platform and how to navigate the platform. And I'm responsible for the instructional design. And if you have might face any technical issues while uh, 
uh, accessing the courses, uh, I will be helping you. Thank you and happy to be here. Thanks so much, Cynthia. And I would like to also uh, thank a two important person in the background, Ana Moreira for the stellar graphic design and comms uh, support, as well as Catarina Duarte for the excellent coordination work. So warm thanks to them um, as well. And before I hand over to Alexandra, I would like to briefly just give you the agenda that we designed for you today. So as Alexandra has uh, referred to it, by the end of this webinar, hopefully you will get familiar with the importance of continuous learning and how it can really significantly impact your personal and professional growth. You will be aware of the benefits and challenges of online learning, and you will be also equipped with different effective techniques tips to succeed in online learning. So without further ado, I invite Alexandra to lead us into the first part of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, so as we said at the beginning, we hopefully will have more of a conversation today. And what I aim to do is just to shed some highlights for us to think about and hopefully entice you a bit to consider online learning as a good option as something that you consider as part of your educational path. Um, I think, um, again, it's, it's, we have become more and more familiar with online learning as a, an essential part um, of our educational path uh, in the modern world. All this has been heightened uh, lately. Well, uh, not sure if so lately, but um, with the discussions around, around um, AI, artificial intelligence, and the promises it offers for online education uh, too. Um, but uh, again, we just want to showcase that this can be a good tool for you to consider uh, for sure, um, especially focusing on your context, what we hope to develop uh, within this partnership, as Danielle mentioned, was specific offers that could um, that could bring added value for you as UMVs. And this um, basically encapsulates offers that we try to have um, in terms of flexibility to continue your education, regardless of where you are, you are stationed. So the option is really for you to, again, you have a heavy schedule, you, you, you are facing difficulties in securing some other options that you have something you can rely on if you have a bit of time and a particular interest in a topic relevant to you um, even in terms of uh, the professional interest that you have um, that you have uh, within your work but also your own personal interests about the topics or anything you would like to consider in the future um, just one second because I'm having trouble um, yeah I was, it, it blurred my screen for some reason, uh, but I'm now seeing the presentation. So we know that the COVID, during the COVID uh, pandemic and um, and uh, of course that, that specific phenomenon, there was, um, there was indeed an increase in terms of online learning offers. And we can say even a silver lining of, of, of what happened there. Um, and we know that UNV created virtual spaces for you to connect and learn. Um, and trying again to show the adaptability and the promise of these online platforms. What we would like to also focus on here is the, on the importance of continuous learning and skill development. Um, we, we consider that indeed continuous learning is crucial for everyone, but also for the effectiveness of UN volunteers. You want to, of course, I'm sure if you join something as meaningful as UNVs, you want to be able to adapt to new challenges and roles um, in diverse and often uh, changing environments. And we believe that the, the offer that we provide can be a tool in helping, helping you with that. So we also consider that by staying updated, joining these offers we have, you can perform hopefully your duties more effectively and contribute to the success of your missions. Um, and 
before, so I kind of hinted at the benefits you might have joining our courses, but I wanted, we wanted to also hear from you and you'll see uh, Manti um, in the screen and we would ask you to join to the QR code. You can do it easily with your, with your smartphone or either if you're using your computer just to go to menti.com and insert the code there. And I'll ask my colleague Anna to share the to share the Menti screen. So we can start to see your inputs and build from there. Do not be shy. Just uh, what we what we are asking for. Oh, the the answers are coming in. Fantastic. So it's really I would like to to know a bit more about the specific benefits that you have experienced in general from online courses and Unitar's online courses in particular. Uh, if in the case you already took some, so we have references to a holistic understanding of pressing issues that the world is facing now. Such a great point and very good to to read this improved skills, which you found beneficial for your job, remote learning, so that aspect of flexibility somehow, and a lot, again, this reference to skills and competencies enhanced. And this is some something we really, um, we definitely seek with, with the offer that we, that we try to make available. Uh, please, um, and again, reference to uh, self-paced courses. If we would really like to collect your input because we'll consider it, uh, we'll consider it internally also for the review of the courses and um, and everything. So please keep uh, inserting your input if you'd like, and I'll move on to highlight and focus specifically on um, some of the points you just addressed there. So indeed, that in, when we look at the advantages of online learning and we narrow a bit the lens to the UN volunteers specifically, we and we see there in the Mendy as well, um, we can see flexibility as one of the core um, advantages or benefits we have, meaning that you will have the possibility to learn at your own uh, pace and schedule, which can be, of course, ideal uh, Considering the, the considering the demanding nature sometimes of mission timelines and locations, um, and and uh, again this will still allow still allow it to acquire assignment specific skills, uh, and of course hopefully enhancing your ability to perform in diverse situations. The convenience element is also something to consider. We saw there in the Menti too that this our courses indeed can be assessed from any location with an internet connection. And we try to make my colleague Cynthia will delve more into that, but the way the, the courses are organized and presented in a way that make it easier, even with the slow internet connections or some difficulties that you might have there to be able to follow somehow. Um, we know that many of you are stationed in remote or field-based locations, and uh, these things can 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 um, can impose some limitations or obstacles. But indeed, uh, the fact that you can do it online does do not require you to move somewhere to have a face-to-face -face experience um, is definitely an element of convenience. Uh, then, just to not repeat myself, but there's also a respect for your own pace. We are not all the same in the way we learn. We don't have the same time and the same conditions. So online learning in general allows you to customize your learning experience to fit your individual schedule. This is also true for, for, for our courses. And it's, of course, something we consider essential for you as you and the in order to manage your multi, multiple responsibilities uh, and of course you need to manage your time and this also allows you in the case you have just a bit of time at a certain uh, time that you are able to come back and revisit complex topics um, and of course move along as you can then um, availability my again, my colleague Cynthia will delve more into that when she shows you the courses. But we offer different a, a wide range of courses, uh, really in different topics that uh, that are relevant for different types of assignments and interests. And of course, what we aim is to provide multiple opportunities for continuous skill and knowledge 
development. It's so great to know that some of you felt that with our courses. So thank you for sharing that big feedback. Um, so yeah, you can assess them anytime. Um, but we also know, and moving a bit um, to the other um, to the other side of the equation, uh, that there might be some difficulties you have faced sometimes. It's not all bright, although we of course try to address those. But I wanted to we wanted to explore actually what is the key obstacle, the key barrier that you faced or that concerns you when you think about joining an online learning experience or course. And we again invite you to join us in the Menti. Your input is precious for the team. So this is something we'll consider too. I'll just give it a bit more time. I know that, yeah, the technology, it's, it's coming. Perfect. And then skill set. Okay, so limited number of courses, even if we have um, a wide range of offer, we also have many interests and reality evolves really fast uh, these days, right? So yeah, it would be good to have other topics perhaps. Again, feel free to suggest them um, through our channels. Uh, we'll be collecting that input as well. But you are um, also mentioning studying time, which we of course understand. Uh, considering um, the demanding nature of your important missions, internet issues sometimes, network problems, resources, dates unknown. Okay, so sometimes some unpredictability in terms of missions, focus to get more knowledge, share experience. Some of them are for you are not interactive enough. Thank you so much for helping us build this word cloud. And again, as I mentioned, um, as I mentioned before, we will uh, we'll be using these 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 mentees um, to to also collect input and try to and again try to incorporate some of your suggestions to the best of our uh, to, to the best of our knowledge to to support you with your experience. So in terms of I would like now to finalize my my input and I just to make sure I'm I'm within time and also give the the time to my colleagues and to you for our Q&A part of the sessions. I wanted to focus a bit on some of the of the barriers that you have identified but also look at it flip it a bit and maybe think together about ways of overcoming barriers. Um, and some of you, at least implicitly, touched on the motivation aspect. If we look at you're facing already difficulties, let's say in terms of timelines and um, you know resources, network issues, it might be difficult to find the motivation. Um, especially again, looking at your varying schedules, time. Um, so one thing that we have been collecting through our data and, uh, and experiences we have in other courses that might be helpful in terms of addressing the motivation specifically can, can be to set specific goals um, and realistic deadlines, always bearing in mind then the advantage sides of what I mentioned, that you can always revisit and adjust those those deadlines and schedules, but maybe to have a plan in place might, might be helpful. Um, and you can use the own structure of the course to give you some, some guidelines or implicit guidelines on what to cover first. Um, research indeed has shown that if you look at the goals from an achievable perspective and having perhaps an a specific routine within the limits you can. We know that sometimes this is not possible. This can have a positive impact in your motivation too. This is the feedback we, we also receive. Isolation can be an issue too. And this was particularly relevant to within the COVID-19 times where indeed some of you were in really remote areas and not with a lot of support. And you might feel, as some of you said in the mentee as well, this lack of in-person interaction or interactional elements. Um, so um, it can be it can be a good idea to perhaps within your network and the, the UNV channels to 
try to see it. I'm thinking about uh, LinkedIn and other ways of communicating study groups and virtual meetups. Um, and this can help you, we hope, also to provide a sense of community, a sense of belonging. Um, and we hope that spaces as this one, as this webinar, um, this webinar today and some initiatives we plan to organize in the future will also help you create this virtual space for interaction and, you know, exchange um, and for you to not feel uh, lonely you we want we definitely want you to feel that we are here for you and that you have so many colleagues joining as you'll see in the participants list today in terms of the technical issues as Cynthia mentioned we are here to support you of course we cannot uh, solve a uh, lack of interaction uh, of internet connection but we have technical resources that can um, that are put at your disposal uh, to support you. So, shall you face any technical issue that relates to the courses, please do reach out to us and we'll be able to provide you guidance and uh, support on how to navigate technical challenges um, and um, support in assessing our tools and resources. Um, then, finally, engagement. Um, so we are looking at a different setting, okay? We were, uh, many of us, in traditional uh, classrooms and we might have a way to see, you know, even embedded in us um, of looking what is, to what is learning and, you know, acquiring knowledge. So uh, it might be more difficult in a virtual environment sometimes to avoid distractions and, you know, overcome, for instance, the lack of immediate feedback um, but again, uh, one useful tip might be to create a dedicated study space uh, and again, look at the achievable goals element um, and perhaps look at also the, the, the element of trying to create a, co a community of exchange um, to help improve focus, to learn from, from others in terms of what is working for them in terms of the learning experience. And of course, reach out to us to support you with tips and how you can engage further. Um, um, also studies and research, our own data has shown that if you're able to participate in online discussions as this, um, this will help you again to feel uh, more connected and will have a positive impact in your engagement. So again, this is for us a starting point for that discussion. And we really look forward to hearing from you through our channels in terms of what we can do better. But we really encourage everyone to connect um, and again, to, to, to reach out anytime. This is all on my side, uh, just some glimpse of light or small tips to for you to consider, but mostly a very warm, um, invitation for you to to join and enroll in our UNV courses and um, get in contact with us. So thank you so much for having me and I look forward to now catch up on the discussions that were taking place in the chat while I was presenting. Over to you, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Alexandra. And let's give her a round of applause or we can do so with uh, the reaction functionalities as well. So we see the pouring love and applause uh, as well virtually. And indeed, just to maybe connect with some of the points that um, Alexandra has mentioned, I always like to also step maybe one step back uh, and look at why learning is important. Of course, we are all quite busy with our job, with our day-to-day -day responsibilities. And I often reflect and I come to the conclusion that as Alex has mentioned, if you if you look around, there are global challenges everywhere. I mean, you don't need to go far. You just look beside you and you see um, the poly crisis that has overtaken the world actually. And we do believe at UNV that your power to be uh, inspiration in action, your power to become real ag agents of change actually lies with the ability and your ability to be more effective, 
to me be more of a strategic thinker, to be more of an effective communicator, to handle different situations in a more effective way. So that is why the power of learning, the power of online learning cannot be understated in this, in this endeavor. If you want to be ahead of the curve, you want to be so-called future ready, then definitely the online courses are out there for you to develop those. And right now, just to connect the thread, looking at benefits and, and challenges of, uh, of online learning, we want to also look at what actually we can do in our own capacities or within our teams, within our organizations to actually overcome those challenges and to find different solutions and strategies to be the best in online learning and to be effective learners. And right now we have a Menti question for you. We are asking you what could potentially help you and us become successful in, in online learning. I see some of the answers are self-discipline, inquisitive, curious, self-motivation, ready for change, good time management, wanting to be updated, being curious, learning new things, absolutely. I see quite a lot on continuous education and actually time management, effective time management. We have some specific tips for you. Actually, yes, keep in pace with new development, absolutely. Those are fantastic uh, reflections. If uh, you are unable to use Menti, you may also share your responses in the chat. So we give the opportunity for all colleague involved in the meeting. Absolutely. So I think that, that you have summarized it very well. There are all these different areas that are always coming up, like time management. What do I do if I have a eight hour job? and then I do a 10 hour shift because I have to do overtime, then how do I find specifically those uh, different time slots in my day to make learning happen and make learning be part of my habit and my everyday, everyday life. And to look at some of the quick tips, I have actually uh, brought you a couple of um, interesting points. Maybe we can go through some of those. If you cannot see the screen for some reason or you're only listening to it, let me just uh, read you out loud. Clear goals, accountability, progress, consistency, collaboration, your environment, equipment, communication, support network, learning bodies, resources and capacity development team, a CDT acronym. And here we can indicate what are the most important for us. And I will lead you through each of them individually to bring you uh, to the context uh, of it. We have added clear goals at the first because it is essential to know what you want to achieve both in short term and also long term. And it goals are give you actually um, a clear direction and purpose. And whether it's completing a course, mastering a new skill, or simply earning a certification, having clear objectives keeps you focused and, and motivated. Accountability is another crucial element. You have to hold yourself accountable by setting deadlines and really sticking to them. You can also find an accountability partner to check in with regularly. This could be a peer or a mentor who helps keep you on track. Uh, just to bring in my example, my friend is currently finalizing her PhD studies. And I stepped in as, a, as a, the accountability partner because there are still 50 pages to complete uh, the PhD dissertation. And what I do as the accountability partner is I set up a weekly meeting, a weekly check-in, just a 30 minute call that I do to go over some of the progress as well. So it's an excellent opportunity for, 
for friends and for also colleagues in general to be be there for them uh, as a good colleague, a good friend, to be the accountability partner. And connecting to this is the progress, number three. Uh, you have to keep track of your progress and regularly review what you have accomplished and what still needs to be done. This on, not only helps you stay organized, but also give you a sense of achievement to see, oh my goodness, I have reached a new goal and there is another step ahead of me. So this can maintain a great set of motivation for you. Consistency is also key. A routine and sticking to that routine is also something that helps a lot of colleagues dedicate really specific times each day or week to your studies, just as you would do for attending a class in person or just as you have done in your high school and primary schools in your university. And the consistent effort, even if it's a little bit each day, can lead to significant progress over time. As we see also in research, micro learnings are taking really over in many cases. And just to give you an example, once again, from my experience, I like to listen to different podcasts. So what I do is that when I have to go to um, a meeting or I have to go to the office, for instance, or I just uh, having my breakfast, I like to listen to a specific career management podcast so that I can offer some of the key insights when we have different webinars and workshops. So I encourage everyone to take those little moments um, within your daily schedule to insert little videos, little podcasts, taking maybe one lesson in the specific e-learning course to help you with the progress. Then the second one is collaboration, which has came out strongly also in the chat. Really do not underestimate the power of collaboration, engaging with your peers in discussions and just looking at your duty station or even your UN entity that you are serving with and finding fellow UN volunteers there to discuss learning, to look at what specific skills you may need actually for your specific job or for the position that you aspire to get in the future. And this really makes learning a group project and more interactive and more enjoyable. So you can also bounce off ideas with each other and gain different perspective. It's, a, it's an excellent way to enhance your learning experience. Two very important points, your environment and your equipment, which we do not think about necessarily, but indeed you have to create an optimal learning environment. You have to find quiet and comfortable spaces where you can focus really on the content. And this plays really a significant role in your ability to concentrate and to retain information and equipment. You have to ensure if possible to find a space where internet connectivity is not an issue. I know very well that it has been a challenge for many of the colleagues, especially if you serve in remote areas or you serve with different communities. If you have the chance, always try to go to the specific entity hub where electricity might be stronger. So we encourage you to find those little spots in your day where you can actually dedicate those, those moments to learning. And some of the final points are communication. Very important going back to the group uh, setting that sharing and communicating between colleagues can really enhance that experience as well as building a support network and finding those learning buddies that you, you may find harmony with to look at some of the courses. You may even uh, look at one specific area and you do the course together uh, so you can follow each other's progress and, and make yourself each other accountable. And definitely one final thought is, is us, uh, CDT, the Capacity Development Team, and also the team at UNITAR. It's um, important to mention that we try our best to support you throughout uh, this journey, really. And um, we try to provide you with all tools, materials, and support services to 
go through those uh, courses uh, with success and to feel empowered throughout this learning process and learning journey to actually have the courage and really the, the bravery to find those times and, and complete those courses in, in the different contexts you are serving at the moment. And uh, to continue uh, on this thread, now that we have um, looked at some of the potential solutions, I thought that I will circulate with you one specific exercise or takeaway sheet that we have prepared. It's a learning inventory. First, to actually look at the benefits, challenges, and also identify different um, elements. Just uh, before we step to the next element, I, I wanted to bring you or lead you through this, this quick material. I can share my screen quickly before I hand it over to colleagues. Maybe this will operationalize a bit the different elements. So after this session, we can share with you, this is one specific example of how to set those specific goals to identify your needs and also to uh, look at what's available. So we, we encourage you to look at what you need to learn and what is available. And we often form learning around different competencies and skills. And here we uh, ask you to identify six specific uh, competencies or skills that you would like to develop on. It may be communication, managing different stress, leadership, and so on. So you can look at, for instance, your description of assignment or the job description that you aspire uh, to get the role of and uh, look at the different competencies available uh, there that could indicate what you would need to actually develop further. And uh, we also have a so-called uh, priority matrix. So in order to actually set time and to strategically think about what different skills and competencies you want to learn, we have this uh, prioritization matrix available where you can look at the allocated time on the left-hand side and below the level of importance. So here you can see those competencies and skills that are less time consuming, uh, but very much important. You can learn those right away. Those competencies and skills that take less time, but are less important, you can learn them as chances arise. And those skills that are less important for your current role or your future role, but take much time to learn, you can actually decide later on and prioritize accordingly whether you need to learn them now or you can focus on them later. And there are those skills and competencies that are, are actually taking quite a lot of time and are also very important. So there we encourage you to look at time effectively and schedule blocks uh, even further to dedicate continuous time for learning those skills. And now, as we are moving to actually identifying what is out there for me to develop those skills and competencies, what are the learning opportunities available? Here, one of the first uh, element I would suggest is put the UNITAR courses, because this is a fantastic offering that we have especially for colleagues who are serving in, uh, I would say, uh, challenging, um, challenging environments. I will put back my uh, screen, just a second. And um, yes, indeed, in this next part, we want to lead you through actually what is out there for you to learn, specifically focusing on uh, the UNITAR offering. And what you need to do the very first thing is to go to learning.umv.org and I will share my screen before I give it to my colleague Cynthia. So once you access 
the very important central learning portal of UN volunteers, the eCampus, which you can do by going to learning.unv.org. You see um, an updated website. And if you scroll a bit below, you see a number of self-paced learning available for you. One of the rolling tiles are actually referring to unit R courses. And once you are here, you get all the specific information about the 15 unit R courses available for you. And often we receive the question, then how do we sign up? What you need to do is first of all, browse through the different courses available for you. There are 15 specific ones. And then you have to fill out a registration survey, which is uh, quite simple where you indicate what courses you would like to do and also what uh, specific um, data you have, um, personal uh, data, so we can identify, verify the eligibility and then assign the specific license uh, to you. So what are those uh, 15 specific uh, courses? I can lead you through quickly and then Cynthia will show you a bit about how it is actually, how to manage the Moodle environment. So the 15 courses, as you can see, once you click on the link available, you will be brought to the UNITAR page where you see a set of courses related to peace operations, very much important and relevant for a large group of UN volunteers because a large part of you serve in different peacekeeping missions. So it's an excellent opportunity to get familiar with those thematic areas like prote protection of civilians in peace operation, child soldiers and security forces, human security and post-conflict intervention, strengthening civilian capacities, transitional justice and peace building, UN approach to DDR, which is disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration. And there are a set of courses which are also overarching in terms of, of um, thematic areas like women leadership, peace building, understanding conflict and conflict analysis, conflict resolution, leadership team and self-management, confronting trauma, understanding and transforming stress. These courses also apply to those who do not um, actually serve in any of the any of the mission because you many of you serve in remote areas under a lot of pressure or in different specific contexts related to some of those thematic areas. So the course offering really tries to bring you uh, a great awareness around those thematic areas, as well as enhance some of the cross-functional and core competencies around uh, managing stress, leadership in conflict settings, and so on. So we highly encourage you to browse through the different courses and complete those. Um, some of you have already asked about certification. Indeed, we provide and certificates for the completion of different courses. So it's an excellent opportunity to also, upon completion, share it with colleagues on social media as well, that, that these courses have really enabled your personal and professional growth. So then after your successful sign up, and of course we will share all materials after the session. So you will find the ways to register for these courses. But upon registering for uh, the course that you select, Cynthia will show us now what is actually happening upon receiving the license to the specific course. So Cynthia will lead us through the overview of actually what is taking place on the platform itself. Thank you, Dan. So the first thing they need to do is go to the UNITAR website. Once on the website, they have to click on the user login. Either they can create a new account in here, or if they have an existing account, 
they enter their credentials and log into their account. Once you logged in, you can either click on the My Courses button on the top right or go to your profile. And inside your profile, you can go to My Courses by clicking on this button. It will lead us to the Moodle platform. Once here, you need to click on the My Courses button again. It, it will display all the courses you are enrolled in. Most courses are divided in the same way. Uh, the first thing that you need to, uh, to do is activate your pop-up windows in your browser in order to the interactive le uh, lesson to launch. I will give you a quick overview of the interactive lesson. So this is an example of a course. You can have bullet points, texts, images, and several interactivities like uh, um, videos, questions that you need to answer. And there's documents that you can download and links. So it's very interactive. Now, as you can see, once you completed the interactive lesson, you can notice that the, um, the rectangle here was gray and turned into uh, green, meaning that you're done uh, and you've seen the interactive lesson. You need to complete both interactive lessons and then you need to complete and pass the quiz and then finish the evaluation questionnaire in order to earn the certificate at the end of the course. And one more thing yet, you can share your thoughts and your questions in the discussion forum with your colleagues that, the, the, that are taking the same courses as you. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, you mentioned, you can have your learning buddies <laughs> and uh, enjoy your learning journey. And if uh, you have any questions or you're facing any technical issues or any technical uh, uh, things that you might face uh, while doing your courses, please do not hesitate to contact us as my colleague uh, Alexandra mentioned. Thank you. Excellent, Cynthia. Thanks for the great overview. And indeed, uh, don't worry, we will share the recording and the materials as well. So you will have uh, time to go through them in details and you can rewatch as well in case there are some questions on how to access uh, the platform and how to enroll, just to answer uh, Dahlia's uh, question. Right now, indeed, we still have a couple of minutes to open the floor for questions. If you have Anything in order to uh, have more information about the courses, you can either reach out to us at support at umv.org, or there is an email address also for UNITAR, which you will find on the presentation as well. So you have actually two specific channels to to do so. To sign up for the UNV courses, once again, your central learning portal is the very first step. You have to go to learning.unv.org and within the offering, you will find the UNITAR courses and there is a step-by-step -step guidance on how to sign up and how to receive your license for the specific course. So that is the general answer to those who are actually wondering about the process itself, learning.umv.org is, is one of your main page. 
pages in terms of learning, and uh, there you will find all specific information. Your colleagues, any specific questions? Yes, we have a question on the length. Maybe Cynthia as e-learning expert can refer to it if there is a specific deadline to finalize a course once the volunteer is en enrolled in a specific course, is there a deadline to complete the course or it's open-ended? Sorry, Daniel. Uh, I think most courses uh, for the UN volunteers, they have six weeks to complete each course. If I'm not mistaken, Katrina, can you correct me if I'm wrong? Yes, I can. I can jump here as well. Uh, I was going to mention this as well. So one note that might be important to consider is that you can only sign up in one course at a time. And you have, as just my colleague said, around two months to finish it. Um, you can enroll in a maximum of five UN courses in total. Um, so bear in mind that it's important if you want to enroll in a second course that you finish the previous one. Uh, my colleague Katarina usually sends reminders and is there to support in terms of, again, you might be busy and just to say, you know, uh, we are here and uh, please do engage and finalize your course. So this is, this is, um, this is it. Uh, you have around two months to finish this. Th just to reassure you, this time frame is quite generous in terms of, uh, Cynthia can also confirm in terms of the learning goals and the methodologies adopted from an instructional design standpoint. So two months would be plenty of time, even with a very busy schedule for you to finish your course. Okay. And again, shall any question uh, arise, um, just reach out. I see that my colleague Kat has her hand up, so I might have forgotten something. I'll hand over to her as she's the coordinator. The Hello, everyone. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Cynthia. Just to let you know that if you face any kind of problems, just contact us in any case, regardless the the deadline that we establish. Um, and uh, just let us know if you have any problem, please. Okay, thank you. Indeed, fantastic. Let's see if there are any other questions. Indeed, the recording and the materials will be shared with you after the session. So you can look at the process once again. You can access the prioritization uh, or learning inventory, as we call, and as I have showed you. And you can also look at the UNITAR offer for, for all of you. In the meantime, while colleagues are still typing in their question, maybe as we come closer to the end of the session, I would like to just maybe ask Alexandra and Cynthia if you have any final words or messages to uh, the audience here today. Um, on my side, not a specific question. I just want to thank everyone uh, for their time today and for, you know, just the mixed busy schedules, which I'm sure all you have, you know, to have spent a bit of time with us, with the team um, on both sides. And it's a huge pleasure to be with you here to Daniel and with my colleagues. And I, I want to thank you for looping me in into the webinar as it is a huge pleasure to learn a bit more about uh, everyone here, your UNP path, where you come from, and to also be able to know that some of you are already benefiting from our courses, but hopefully many of you will enroll soon. So just uh, to reassure you that UNIT, our team is fully committed to support you in anything that you need. Um, and to a huge thank you to, to UNV uh, for this uh, amazing partnership. Um, it was great. The coordinating, organizing, and being here in the webinar. Thank you, Daniel. 
Same goes for me, no questions. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you everyone for joining. And uh, uh, we are always happy to help and make your learning journey pleasant as much as possible. Thank you everyone. Thank you colleagues and indeed, just to close, uh, warm thanks to all of you who joined us today. Please don't feel shy to reach out to us. We are here to support you. And if you have any specific questions, you can reach out to us. And indeed, do not underestimate the power of learning. It is one of those tools that are universal and helps us to become better professionals, better human beings, and only know through that to enable the UN development system to be to be better at, at the end of the day. So uh, this is a great tool. Learning is universal. So uh, use it while you're serving with UN volunteers because you have a great set of resources available for you. So with that, uh, thanks to once again, Alexandra, Cynthia, Anna and Katarina in the background for their fantastic work. It's always a pleasure to have a joint webinar with them. And uh, once again, we will circulate all materials and video recordings with you after the, after the session. And um, let's meet soon. Hopefully we can have other occasions where we welcome all of you once again. So thank you and have a nice rest of the day.